So Challengers is out, and honestly, this movie is way better than I thought it would be. It is a top three movie of the year for me, and honestly, you could make a case for this movie being the best movie of the year, but Dune Part 2 is sitting right there, so maybe it can take number two. Anyways, let's talk about this movie. As always, this video will have spoilers, so if you don't want spoilers, head over to my shorts, TikTok, or Instagram, and check out my one-take movie review on this movie. But without further ado, let's talk about Challengers. So in this movie, we follow Zendaya's character, Tashi Duncan, who is a former tennis player turned tennis coach. And when she signs her husband up for this challenger match, they both soon realize that one of his opponents is actually not only his former best friend, but Tashi's ex-boyfriend. And this leads to a whole messy love triangle that leads to quite the movie. As always, starting things off with the good, and the first thing I have here has to be Zendaya. This was her first lead role in a movie of this size, and in my opinion, this is probably her best performance of her career. She truly invested herself into this character, and she just absolutely killed it. She stole the show in just about every scene that she was in. One of my favorite things about her performance, though, is that she just had such an expressive face throughout this entire film. I mean, there were scenes when she would be talking to either Mike Feist or Josh O'Connor's character, and she would make these faces that were just almost comical in a way, but in that moment, you knew exactly what her character was thinking and feeling. So it was cool to see her become this character because I did not see Zendaya at all in this movie. I only saw Tashi Duncan and she is an extremely unlikable character if I do say so myself. But that leads me kind of to my next point of how good Zendaya's performance was in this movie. And that is that Tashi Duncan was just not a good person at all. She's not someone you want to like, but for some strange reason, I still found a little part of myself wanting to cheer for her and wanting things to turn out well for her. So that's just more of a credit to Zendaya for somehow making a character that you both hate but for some odd reason also like and want to win at the same time. Next up for the good, and I of course can't mention Zendaya without mentioning her co-stars, Mike Feist and Josh O'Connor, who are both phenomenal in this film as well. Really this whole cast did an outstanding job. They had great chemistry between the three, which really gave that love triangle they had going on throughout the movie a lot of tension. I will say though, I can't say that I like their characters in Art and Patrick any more than I do Tashi because all three of these characters weren't the greatest of people and they were pretty terrible to each other throughout the entire movie. But I will say though, that is something that this film did very well. There was definitely three perspectives in this movie and I was bouncing back and forth throughout this entire movie on who I liked and who I hated. Sometimes it was Art I was cheering for and hated the other two. Sometimes it was Tashi I was cheering for and hated the other two. Or heck, sometimes it was Patrick I was cheering for and hated the other two. You were always back and forth and that kind of kept you on your toes like a tennis match, but that's something I'll get to in just a second. But yeah, each character had their moments where I liked them and wanted to cheer for them. And they had their moments where I absolutely despised everything about them. So that's just a big kudos to this entire cast because it is very hard for an actor to get you to both like and also hate your character, let alone three actors doing it in one movie. Next up for the good, I have the editing slash overall just storytelling in this movie. Now, I'll be honest, in the beginning of this movie, when they were kind of revealing how they were going to tell this story, I really wasn't so sure how I felt about it. And then I realized what they were doing and I was like, oh, wow, this, this, this is good. Now I know very little about tennis, but this story was essentially told like a tennis match. It had three clearly defined acts, just like a tennis match has three sets. And as this tennis match between Art and Patrick went on, the events of the film mirrored that, and I just thought that was genius. So in the first set or act, Patrick is the one who wins, and he's also the one who wins Tashi right there in the beginning of the movie. But in the second set, he loses. So in the second act of the movie, he also loses Tashi to Art. And in the third set, they don't show who won that set, just like they don't show who won Tashi in the end. And I definitely have some feelings about that, 
but I will get to that later in this video. So yeah, the way this story was told was super creative. It really just felt like a breath of fresh air for the sports drama genre, and it really just kept you engaged with this story all the way through. And finally for the good, I have the tennis matches. Now the tennis matches were just so much fun to watch in this movie. They were shot very creatively. There are so many creative edits within them, and that just made these matches even more exciting. I mean, there is literally a part where you have a POV of a tennis ball and you're kind of strapped to this tennis ball and they're just hitting you back and forth during this match and honestly that's kind of how you felt with this movie you're going back and forth with how you felt with all of these characters and I don't know much about tennis as I said before but if tennis matches are anything like they were in this movie I'm gonna have to start watching this sport because it is awesome. Moving on to the so-so, and the first thing I have here is the music in this movie. Now, let me start by saying the score in this movie was absolutely phenomenal, but I wasn't always on board with how and when they used it sometimes. There were moments when the score got louder and louder as the tension built in this movie, and that was something I definitely liked about this movie, but where I jumped off board with this is when the score got so loud that you couldn't really hear what our characters were saying in that scene. And also, and I don't know if I'm remembering this quite right, but there was a couple times in this film where the music would just shift tones right in the middle of a scene. For instance, when Patrick and Tashi met up the night before the challenger match that he had against Art, they were playing this super intense score that was helping build the tension of this scene and then of course when they started to you know hook up in that scene they switched the music on a dime to this more choir sounding song and for me that just really didn't fit that particular moment i feel like if they would have just let that score keep playing out through that scene i think it would have been a little bit better in my opinion and they did do this a couple times in the movie where i just don't think the music quite matched up what was on screen but yes at the end of the day i did love the score that was composed for this movie I thought it was phenomenal, just wasn't always on board with how and when they used it. And finally for the so-so is that this movie was just a little too long in my opinion. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed this movie all the way through, I think it's a really good movie, but I do think it could have been like 10 to 15 minutes shorter. There were some scenes that I think could have been cut down a little bit because there was a lot of scenes in this movie that were very dialogue heavy and that made them feel a little bit longer than they needed to be for me. And I started to feel that runtime towards the end of the movie as they revealed a couple more things about the story in that third act which made it kind of feel more stretched out than I think it needed to be. And finally getting into the bad and the only thing I have here I kind of briefly mentioned before but I wasn't too big of a fan of the ending of this movie. I just felt like okay we just spent a whole two hours with these characters getting to know them and going back and forth on who was going to win and end up with Tashi all for us not to have a conclusion to this big dramatic love triangle. So I definitely walked out of the theater after watching that ending a little underwhelmed. And I guess you could make an argument that this movie was more about the relationship between Art and Patrick and how Tashi came between them because at the end of the movie, they technically both won since they tied and reconciled their differences and kind of came together with that big hug they had right in the last scene of the movie. But even with that said, there were stakes for each of these characters when it came to the outcome of the tennis match so when you have this ending that's pretty ambiguous on who won and who ends up with Tashi it just felt like those stakes weren't really paid off in the end and that was one of my biggest dislikes with this movie and that's kind of the reason why I have this movie at really good and not great. Overall though, Challengers is a really good movie and is currently a top three movie of the year for me. Zendaya and the rest of the cast was great and the story was told really creatively. There was plenty of tension and the tennis matches were an absolute blast to watch. So this is definitely a movie that I think you should check out. Those are my thoughts on Challengers. Be sure to let me know what you thought of the movie down in the comments and as always be sure to like, subscribe, comment, get your easy apparel at shopeasyapparel.com. God bless and I'll see you guys later. Peace. <laughs>